The intro to this song is um, is from a, a live concert that we played in June of 2007 in uh, in America. We, we started playing the song with this kind of drone that develops into the beginning of the track by kind of speeding up very slowly. We found that to be an exciting way to start live shows, and it's something that Alexis suggested we use as the opening to the album because it just kind of it's a kind of grand and uh, exciting way to start. You can hear the crowd in the background, you can hear the kind of excitement from the concert. So we thought it was a, a good way to begin the, the record. Some of the reference points for this musically were um, things like groups like Black Sabbath and a little bit of Led Zeppelin as we we're like traveling to festivals and we were just kind of in love with the, the kind of massive, monumental, kind of very simple kind of riffs and uh, I thought it would be an exciting idea to do something like that using synthesizers and throw into them references from kind of like 60s kind of pop music and, and in terms of the, the beat and things there were references from old kind of drum and bass kind of rhythms and things as well so it's a kind of collision between all those things in terms of music. Musically, Shaker Fist, uh, there are some obvious influences. You know, the work of Timberland, for instance. There are, there are similarities in things he does with layers of different kinds of percussion that we, we employ in Shaker Fist. Um, what I wanted to do is do something a little more kind of off the wall, a little more kind of um, crazy sounding, you know, a little bit more kind of out there than you might find on most kind of Timberland tracks. It's, it's got a kind of rawness and a rockiness that you don't get so much on some of his music. Um, the idea was to kind of use different kinds of hand drums and bongos and shakers and things so that it kind of has the feel of like a piece of African music, a very percussive kind of nature. Halfway through the track something totally unexpected appears, you know, in the, in the case of Shaker Fist it's this massive kind of new bass line that comes in. I just find that a very exciting thing uh, that doesn't occur very often, you know, that a song kind of swerves and changes direction at a point when you're not expecting it. We sampled a Todd Rundgren track which on his album Something Anything is just a little interlude um, where he starts sort of explaining the way in which you get various problems in recording in the studio like hiss and um, feedback and things like that he sort of gives examples of these and um, Joe and I I think we were just sort of in the middle of working on Shaker Fist and we felt like somehow that sample would 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 work pretty well as a kind of break in the music and it was also something that Al would often quote when he was doing a sound check and we kind of liked it for that reason too a bit like a rewind in a record or something just a kind of massive like intrusion into the music um, the lyrics to Shake a Fist I was thinking about something Joe had described to me a particular hallucinogenic drug that he was saying might be up my street um, <laughs> And uh, I was imagining what it would be like if I did take it, and I was sort of allowing myself to have this sort of fantasy of of it being quite a sort of horrific uh, experience. I was thinking about this band, um, the uh, the Edgar Broughton band. They had this song "Out Demons Out," and I was imagining having to sort of in the chorus of Shake Fist, we're singing about saying "out and out and out, out and out and out." It's, it's a way of trying to get rid of this um, feeling that has taken over me as I fantasised about this drug that I never took. Ready for the floor um, was it's quite an immediate track. Kind of, it's one of those ones. Well, obviously, there's lots of work and love went into it, but it kind of compelled itself along. It's quite a compulsive song. Um, it was based around just an arpeggiation, like a running sort of melody. That um, yeah, and then Alexis did some lyrics that seemed quite compulsive about doing it now. 
and saying things now. I felt like the music that Joe had made was so good that it was necessary to have words that sort of uh, worked with the simplicity of the music and the, the sort of directness of the music. We only had like a, a section of music, so I was aware that whatever I was saying in the lyrics could be a way of encouraging everyone in the band to sort of carry on making the rest of it. So it was a bit of a kind of um, call to action, I suppose. It seems like um, an obvious choice for a single to us. It's it's really kind of the the most like obviously poppy thing we've ever done. Like it's it's a very catchy melody. You know, you find yourself humming it. I've, you know, conversations I've had with friends and things that they, they constantly say that you know it just gets stuck in their head. You know, when when we're making the music for this song, it was all about it just being like a, a very kind of um, kind of nagging, um, as I said, kind of compulsive, like um, powerful rhythm that you just can't help but you know want to either like dance along with or sing along with. You know, it's, it was our it was our attempt to just be like an out and out pop band and not be ashamed of that. You know, to kind of just really enjoy that. It's a great, like simple melody and everything, and it probably is the most straightforward pop song we've made. But in a way, I don't really mind the fact that that might be misleading to people. Um, that every record we've made, we've tried to make quite different styles of music from track to track. So in a way, that's quite nice if people are drawn into something and then they realise it's completely different from, from song to song and the rest of it. But I don't really think it, it's not something we really thought about too much, but it doesn't really bother me either if, if it's kind of confusing to people. In terms of in terms of rhythms and things within this song, um, you get you know you're gonna notice a kind of pattern emerging of us taking references from from kind of modern hip hop and, and things like this. But you know there 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 is like emphasis and, and and strange kind of jerkiness to to this beat that you don't find so often in that music. So it's about us you know having these references, but then trying to move these rhythms and give these songs like kind of swings that you don't really find in, in in many of these other kinds of music to give it a kind of identity of its own. The way that Bendable Posable came together was one of the first times that we sort of successfully worked with Joe sending via email like just a bit of music and me then just immediately putting words on top of it and sending it back. We kind of used to always work much more um, you know in one place or in one studio but um, but some bits of this record are written in that way, just kind of literally just sending things backwards and forwards between each member of the band and sort of adding things at home. And I remember that being quite, quite exciting about this one, just sort of immediately having some words that just could fit straight on top and then sending that back to Joe and then, then writing new words in response to what I'd said and that coming back to me. So it's kind of ping-ponging around. In a, in a bendable, bouncy sort of way. Yeah. of this song um, came from uh, something, a session similar to what we've been talking about before already today of, of us working together, Alexis and I, on a piece of music and then needing like a break or a change, needing to do something different. Um, and I think Alexis is maybe playing one of our keyboards, maybe like a Yamaha or something. And, and um, a, a small kind of melody or a chord sequence that Alexis played as part of what a session for one song, we thought, okay, this could be the beginning of something completely different and a new, and a new piece of music. So I think we, we kind of began a new a new song and, uh, and 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 the song developed very quickly. I think over the course of a, a day or a couple of days. And this was this is one of the oldest songs um, on this record in terms of you know when we started work on it, it's it, it's maybe you know over two years old or something like that to us. Um, so in, in some ways it kind of feels like you know, um, part of kind of another project, but we felt like the strong the, the song was strong enough um, for it to kind of work on this album. It's one of it's one of my favourite kind of 
you know, it's, it, it has a quite a kind of classic sound to it, and and again, it's one of these one of these songs that, in terms of the production and the mixing and everything, we felt like it wanted to make it the kind of perfect piece of music for like a 5 a.m. cab ride after you've been at a club and you go home and Magic FM just sounds like the best radio station in the world. Quite a lot of these songs kind of start life as just a kind of rhythmic idea that one of us have or has or, or that I have then it's so I was trying to make something influenced by like a um, like afro beat um, in terms of some of the rhythms and but then you know that bears really kind of no relation to the, the song as it is as it's finished you know they begin as these kind of rhythmic ideas or these starting points that then just kind of go off you know somewhere completely different and that song now has like parts written by Alexis and parts played by everyone else. And then it developed into, um, I just kind of had this, I thought this, this phrase, touch too much, has the feeling of um, a kind of romantic 60s -y kind of lyric that you might get on like a Phil Spector compilation or something like that. And I imagined like, you know, a kind of girl group singing it all together in this kind of R&B or kind of Motown way. Um, so you know, uh, I just tried to kind of layer the vocals in that in in a, in, a, in a kind of way that you might hear on, on a record like that. I quite like the way that this song is about seems to be about something being like a touch too much, just a little bit too much. But then the music is quite kind of um, busy all the way through, quite kind of blaring. Like the synth parts at the beginning are pretty blaring, and it's full of percussion and it's sort of overloaded with information in a way. And that's quite nice, kind of someone to be saying this is just a bit, you know, just a bit too much and there's quite a lot of tenderness in the lyrics and things, but then it's a pretty like emphatic message at the same time. We were made in the dark. I had a had an idea of a melody and a chord sequence that felt to me like I was writing something quite sort of old-fashioned sounding and classic sounding. Um, I almost couldn't tell if it was someone else's melody to start with that I just like, got in my head. Um, but I just kind of ignored that and just thought, well, I'll just work on it anyway and see what it turns into. And I, I was listening to a lot of Willie Nelson before I wrote that song. Songs ended up having much more of a kind of American soul feel to it, but the actual type of melody and the chord changes and the simplicity of the chorus in, in terms of the words, I wanted it to, to feel like a classic country song. But there's a lot of crossover between country and soul music, so I kind of didn't really mind the fact that these two things weren't so evident in the finished record. Made in the Dark has found its way into the live set, I think because I get the impression some of my quieter songs are like really personal and maybe other people don't really find a way into them and they don't really feel they're connected to them. This song, it's, it's easy to be involved in it rather than it being a very like specific message that is peculiar to me. And um, well, it's, it's kind of like um, <clears throat> a song between two people but it's also like a song for everyone as well because it's the notion of singing about more than one person like we rather than yeah. I and you. Kind of sort of makes it. That's why it's quite good for a live one as well. I think it's more inclusive. Mm. Yeah, and it's inclusive because it's about a you know a personal relationship between two people. But it's also um, the phrasing of it is such that it could be for anyone to 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 be a part of. And also, just to be made in the dark is kind of how everyone every person is made. thought um, this kind of reggaeton beat, which you know, every kind of reggaeton tune has exactly the same drum beat, I thought if you sped it up a bit it would be an interesting version of a kind of house rhythm. Um, so I'd kind of created that rhythm and 
kind of tried to find a baseline of things that just worked very well with that with that rhythm and created this kind of interesting rhythmic thing which we then all worked on together we started as that with that as the basis and this is one of the most kind of collaborative songs on the record you know and it has very important contributions from everyone like one of the kind of main synth lines in the chorus is a very kind of strong melody and it's written completely by Owen in the kind of middle section of this kind of heavy kind of rock out bit just something that uh, was kind of all uh, you know something that Alexis came up with completely and there are parts really written by by Alan Felix as well so it feels like a kind of success and it feels like a new kind of song in a way from for us because we've never really done that to to that extent on hardly anything else that we've done Uh, Hold On has been a, uh, a mainstay of our live show for uh, quite a while now. It's one of the tracks from the new album that we've been playing for longest live and it generally gets a very good response during our live show. It's, um, it's one of the fastest songs what's in our B arsenal. What's, what's the BPM on that one, Joe? I'd say it's about 134. 134. The speed of garage music, interestingly. Um, Hold On Hold on, we have a demo version of it from my computer which is much slower than that and uh, you know, it seems like a kind of pale imitation of the, of the finished song now so this is another song that started life as something that Alexis and I made quite a while ago but it's taken on a, a whole life of its own once Owen and uh, the others got their teeth into it, mm. whipped it into shape. Features um, Al Doyle's trademark disco guitar style that he, um, he's learned or perfected playing with LCD sound system this year. It has live bass and guitar. Um, so I think it's one of the tracks that kind of uh, has a lot of owl in it. It's me versus you and love. It's me versus you and love. It's me versus you and love. We wrote a song called Wrestlers in an afternoon. It's about wrestling. I really like wrestling. Uh, it's also about imagining wrestling James Murphy, who wrestled Al away from us for a while to put him in LCD sound systems. We had a, we had a very productive afternoon where um, Alexis had like the basics of an idea for a song, and uh, you know some of the words. And uh, Owen and Alexis came round to my house and. Very quickly, I kind of put a, a very simple beat together using our favourite kind of hand clap sounds that you find in a lot of kind of modern R&B productions. Um, and then Owen and myself and Alexis kind of brainstormed different lyrical ideas relating to things that occur as within many, like as WWE. Many, as many wrestling cliches as we could, and then we whittled them down and then put them all together in a way that was um, extraordinary. It would, and in terms of the way the song is structured, we wanted to kind of have like a barrage of different lyrical hooks and uh, melodies kind of one, one after another so you have this kind of string of very kind of catchy and pleasant um, kind of fun different melodies relating to, relating to these ideas that Alexis has been talking about, about wrestling and, and Al and James Murphy and then to move into a, a, um, a slightly more kind of um, sombre kind of mood in, t in, the, in, in the later part of the song. And we also took these ideas of like looping bits of words, which is something that has been popular in kind of different forms of dance music for obviously a long time, but there's been a resurgence of it in the UK in the last couple of years. And it's also been used in these kind of R&B songs that we're referencing occasionally. So we used that on occasion within the song as well. Um, I, it was my like kind of only, one and only time writing a song when I've tried to write serious words about um, a serious subject, which is the fact that um, I feel that um, George Bush and, and Tony Blair, to a certain extent, are evil people and should pay for their crimes to humanity. And um, 
So I wrote a verse saying we should de denounce these evil men. And um, and Alexis thought I'd been seeing from 300. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> with the words talking about freedom, it was supposed to be relating two things, which is the idea of whether people are kind of, um, do have a kind of large degree of freedom in, in kind of modern capitalist democracies, or whether we're kind of forced into the kind of ways of living and working that aren't that, that kind of free. But also the idea of whether there's kind of freedom when you're when you're kind of dancing in a very repetitive and kind of controlled way in, in a club to kind of modern dance music as well. Um, and whether that's really kind of freedom or whether there's a whole system for dancing that, you know, you, you, know, you kind of, you know, there's, there's accepted behaviour and that's what people do in a club or whatever. Yeah, so of course, like, I suppose, like in disco music or dance music, there's lots of commands to dance, like, you know, put your arms in the air and shake bits of your body at different times. I thought it was quite fun that it's like a, an anti-dance, an antidote to dance. It's kind of like, you know, you almost have people standing still whilst it. Oh, well, yeah, the the words I was singing in the in the don't dance section of it, I kind of wanted to um, see what would happen in a. I was sort of imagining the record being played in the club or us playing it live, and uh, the music sort of making people feel compelled to dance, but then having someone commanding that they don't dance. It was just a simple um, sort of perverse idea. Just wanted to see what would happen there and um, yet to find out I suppose I don't want to play it live so people stop dancing or dance even more there's a, there's a children's book called Whistle for Willie by Ezra Jack Keats that I really like the illustrations in and that I used to read as a kid and then the phrase got caught in my head and I was just thinking about um, the name Will and my, my oldest brother is Will and I was thinking about other people that I like and some of those people you know are just inspirations to me like Will Alden, Willie Nelson and so on. I was just really thinking about the sound of that word and why it is that I've ended up quite kind of uh, interested in people with that name you know, obviously I like lots of people with different names, but I like the fact that it's not just a name, it means to, to will someone to do something. I was just sort of playing around with that phrase, really. And uh, I was also, I was in Barcelona when I wrote the, the melody, which it turned out sounds a lot like Coronation Street theme. Um, but I, I thought it was um, a bit like these Robert Wyatt songs I particularly like from the 80s that are Spanish. Um, melodies and Spanish songs he's covered. I was trying to do something with something of that tune to it, really, and uh, yeah, I can't really say much more about it, really. We just go through a process when we're working of you know, veering from one extreme to another. So we might be working on an incredibly fast, raucous kind of rhythm and then just really need to have like a break from that and express something more gentle. I wanted to get the kind of vocal sound that um, D'Angelo has on particularly like his second record, which is, is partly produced by one of my favourite producers, JD where the vocals are very intimate, um, the mic was obviously very close and they're sung very softly, so you get this lovely kind of intimacy, when you're, particularly when you're listening with headphones. And it's something that we try and do on quite a lot of our songs, is to have this kind of, um, these kind of insistent rhythms or R&B things, but and in the same way that they do with, with some new R&B records, have these kind of lovely, kind of softly spoken lyrics. And I just happen to have these lyrics I've been thinking about this phrase in the privacy of our love and I just kind of set them to the same tempo and music that Joe has been working on. We both seem to be sort of in the same mood, you know, like wanting to write a song that's fairly uh, different from the kind, of the kind of club bangers that we often play live. 